Welcome back. Let's look at some words or rather phrases and idiomatic expressions that relate to involvement and interest today. These will help you sound more like a native speaker. Welcome, I'm Ajit from CapShine. CapShine is a revolutionary learner together English fluency program. And with CapShine, learning English is easy, quick, fun, affordable, and effective. And we promise a whole new you in six months or less. So what are phrasal verbs and what are these idiomatic phrases? Well, phrasal verbs are essentially two words, usually two words combined together, verbs and adjectives, verbs and prepositions, and they tend to mean something beyond of what they look like. For example, if you look forward to something, it doesn't mean you look forward, it actually means that you're looking, well, that you're interested in something, you're excited about something, right? So looking forward means to be excited and not looking directly forward. Let's talk about the first phrasal verb for today, which is not my cup of tea. What do you think not my cup of tea means? Well, does it relate to tea? Not really. So this phrasal verb suggests that you're not interested in something. It means that something is not a thing that you find interesting or that will interest you. For example, I hate rush hour traffic Sitting for hours on the motorway is not my cup of tea. I don't think it's anybody's cup of tea. Especially if you're from a very busy metro, you can relate to how sitting in traffic for hours, getting to somewhere is not really something that you find interesting or that you even want to tolerate. Not my cup of tea. Let's look at the next one. Have an ax to grind. So this is a very brutal sounding figure of speech or idiomatic expression. But this essentially means that you have a problem with someone. When you have an ax to grind, uh, it means that you have a problem that you want to confront or want to uh, sort out with someone. For example, what started as a casual discussion flared up into a heated debate because both of them had an ax to grind. They had an issue they needed to resolve. They had something that they wanted to fight about. That means or that can be expressed with the phrase an ax to grind. Let's look at the next one. Keep a low profile, right? When you keep a low profile, it means that you're trying to hide, you're not going, trying to get attention. Let's look at an example. He's been in a little trouble recently, so he's trying to keep a low profile, right? So he's trying to duck away from others' attention to sort of scooch down on the cubicle and make sure no one sees you. Right? Uh, be there but not be there, that is to keep a low profile. So you're avoiding attention from other people to keep or to maintain a low profile. A nosy parker. You probably, you know, if you've lived in, um, um, in, in small towns, you probably know of this firsthand uh, where you have a neighbor who is very concerned about everything that you do and sort of know more about your life than you know about your own, right? And that kind of person could be characterized as a nosy parker, someone who is too interested, not in a good way, too interested in other people's lives, especially their neighbors. So the village's nosy parker, Sita, uh, likes to spy on her neighbors with binoculars, right? Creepy, but that's what nosy parkers do. They're too interested in other people's lives, not in a positive way. Jump on the bandwagon. If you've been following um, you know, news about investors and money and unicorns, uh, you know, big businesses, not the imaginary animal, uh, you would have noticed that all the money is going towards education these days, right? That's because investors are jumping on the bandwagon. So when people jump into a trend, get, you know, do something that is popular that everyone else is doing, then you are jumping on the bandwagon. For instance, after a couple of politicians won elections by promising to cut taxes, most of the others jumped on the bandwagon. Essentially, they started doing what everyone else was doing that seemed to be popular and that seemed to be getting attention from the public, right? To jump on something that's fashionable or getting a lot of attention is to jump on the bandwagon. Before we look at the next set of phrasal verbs, I want to quickly introduce you to CapShine's 30-day free trial. With this, you get access to speaking opportunities, you get to learn and practice as a group, you get to have personal coach time with customized feedback, you also have access to daily micro lessons and live classes through which you can build your core competency and become a more confident and capable user of the English language. Let's continue, shall we? So the next phrasal verb 
is steer clear of something. When you steer clear of something, you know, imagine you're on the road and you see something on the road and you steer clear of something, you're essentially going away from that situation completely. You're avoiding it all completely, right? So similarly, when you steer clear of something in your life, you're avoiding it completely. You're going completely away from it. I'd advise anyone who is allergic to pollen to steer clear from this week's farmhouse store to completely avoid it, to steer clear of something. Of course, try your hand at something. So again, this doesn't mean that you're you know, literally trying your hand. It means you're giving something a chance. You're giving something a try. You're trying something new that you haven't tried before. For example, after she graduated college, she tried her hand at a variety of jobs. So she tried a lot of the jobs. She tried something new when it concerns job through that period. Just try something new is to try your hand at something. Wet someone's appetite. So the, the, the phrase wet is to sharpen or get to a high degree, right? So when you wet someone's appetite, you get them very, very interested. You get them very, very keen about something. This essentially suggests that someone has gotten very interested. Someone has gotten the antenna perked up. They're very, very concerned and interested about something that they are observing. For example, winning the championship league should have whetted his appetite for more success, should have gotten him more hungry for this particular thing, more interested and excited for this. Up to your years. When you're up to your years in something, you're so, you're so occupied, you're so full of it that you don't want anything else or you don't want any more of this. For example, I can't come out this evening, I'm up to my years in meetings. Informally, they also say up to my eyeballs and something, same uh, meaning, same result. This is slightly more formal, up to my ears is slightly more formal, up to my eyeballs on the other hand is a slightly more informal. But the same meaning is conveyed. Your heart isn't in something. When your heart isn't in something, you're not really feeling it, right? You're not really very involved in it, you don't want to give it your 100%. For instance, she was a successful teacher, popular with her pupils and her colleagues, but her heart wasn't in it, right? So even though she was a successful teacher, she wasn't very interested. She wasn't really completely committed to being a teacher, right? Her heart wasn't in it. I hope you found this interesting and that you learned something new. Do use these phrasal verbs in your conversations. It will help improve your fluency and confidence as you use them more. If you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the bell notification to not miss videos like these. And of course, don't forget to check out your 30-day free trial with CapShine by going to CapShine.com or downloading the app from the Play Store. Thanks for watching.